Hello, welcome to a first look at Against the Storm. This game's been on my radar for a little bit. I saw it, I think, in the next fest, maybe, or a little before that, and I went, oh, that looks cool. Uh, game came out on November 1st, but I am I'm a little late to the party as a result, but this is a roguelike city builder. It's a pretty interesting concept, I gotta say. Instead of, I mean, every city builder is kind of a roguelike, but, you know, Frostpunk is your main game of Frostpunk. The campaign is seeded. This game doesn't really have a campaign, I suppose. It's sort of like every run being endless mode, but not really, because you do have an end point for your runs. So, it'll make sense as we go. The, the concept is cool, and I think that it's pretty fun. It does hit the bases of manage resources, deal with problems, etc. And, like, optimizing your strategy. And for the most part, it's just there's something very nice about organizing a city, I think. So, the concept of the game, if you can't tell, is that there is a permanent storm raging, and it is making life in the, in the world uh, difficult. So, uh, I'll, I'll explain it a little more as we get in. A uh, few things I want to make a make a quick note of. They do have a link to their roadmap on the main page, and they have a scheduled update. Their next update is Thursday, no November 10th, which is about nine days after entering early access. However, the game also did get a hotfix shortly after release, so it seems like any it's not going to be like release an update and then nothing. They'll cover anything particularly bad. So that's all very cool. Uh, real quick look at the settings menu. I do want to make one note as we go through it here. There's a lot of settings you can change. However, uh, one one thing that I think is just an oversight, and it might be me. I've looked twice now and I can't find it, but uh, let, me, let me double check here. Ah, never mind. I am wrong. Uh, it doesn't, but it, I feel like this should be by default. I just didn't see this in controls, though. Uh, this game is full screen windowed and it does not automatically lock your cursor to the screen, which I feel like should be auto on because it, this is edge scrolling mostly. Can you do rebindable keys as well? Oh, you can. Very cool. Uh, can I? Real quick, actually. I would like to change. Uh, where is it? So I want to change. Real quick. Building rotation. I want to change this to right click. Oh, can I not do that? Tried. Okay, well, um, that's uh, that's all right. I, it's fine. I'll get used to it. But it'll be nice if I can make that right click. But overall, no, nothing too crazy. A lot of gameplay options you can change, and you can also change all of the alerts that the game gives you. So you can, it'll it'll pop up alerts, and you can turn them off if you don't want them. They're not uh, particularly intrusive. Also worth noting, you can have multiple profiles. I started the game on this profile. And I am now switching over to a new profile just to be fresh uh, for the video. Uh, without any further ado, let's get to it. Trying to cut down on the amount of time that I spend talking about the game. Oh, uh, actually, one more thing. The game is... It is early access. I believe I've mentioned that a few times. And the game is currently $17. It is $17 for the next two days. And then it goes back to full price of $20. So it's 15% off right now. Uh, it's also in 11 languages, you can check that for yourself. There are quite a few. There's English, there's audio in English, but it's not, like, fully voiced or anything like that, particularly. Anything else? Uh, controller support. No, there's no controller support, it doesn't look like. Usually they, uh, say it. Oh, there's also a demo, apparently, so you can, you can check the demo if you're so inclined. According to the Steam page, anyway. It's not in the place you would normally look for it, though. But, anyway, let's get to it. Let's get into it. So... Uh, it'll make sense when you see it. Yeah, so there's an overworld, effectively, and then there- so there's overworld meta progress, and then there's actual gameplay. So this is your overworld. Uh, what you do here- first of all, we go to the Smoldering City. This is the- in- in war, in universe, this is the place that is able to survive because it's in a cool mountain. So, as you play, you'll gain- experience and the experience you'll be able to use first you'll level up and you'll access new tiers and there's all of these meta upgrades so you can see uh, for example here you get an extra choice at the caravan which is uh that'll make sense when we get into what's the final upgrade you gain a 30 second plus 30 seconds of time after reaching maximum impatience to try and save your settlement oh, okay that's cool uh, it's like the the beginning thing here is the obsidian archives which gives you I don't actually know. I don't think I paid attention. Oh, you get the deeds. I see. 
And deeds, I think, are challenges which you can do to unlock new stuff. There's also a daily challenge, I'm pretty sure. That's what I'm assuming daily expedition is. Uh, but you have to unlock it somewhere in here. Which is a little interesting. I'm not 100% sure what that is. Uh, anyway. I don't have any upgrades right now. I don't have any points because this is a fresh save. There is a pretty... There's a very good tutorial. It took me a while to get through it, which I was surprised. So I was like, damn, this is still the tutorial? They do a great job of easing you into the game, I think. Uh, so... The way that this works now is you pick your path. At the bottom is the cycle progress, and when the bar fills up, your progress throughout the map resets. And so we pick where we want to go, and it will say, so this area is like the Royal Woodlands, this is the Coral Forest, Coral Forest, I think this is Royal Woodlands as well. And then I assume, I haven't actually finished a run, and we will not finish a run in this video because runs are pretty long. I just want to give you an idea of how it works. What I assume here is you, when you establish this, you get a reward, which is in the top left. We'll get some food stockpiles, uh, which I, this is what you use to upgrade at the Smoldering City, of course. And you also, I assume, unlock progress towards the edge of the map. What I'll probably do, actually, is I'll probably do what I did with the Nitro Kid video, and I will, once I've finished explaining everything and you get a good feel for the game, pause and then come back at the end of the run to show off what happens. That's what I'll do. And also, so you get you get a, a modifier based on the surrounding realms as well. So like there's a fishman ritual site here, which is a holy site for the fishman. Uh, orders are disabled. Okay. That seems weird. I want to go here. I don't know. Orders are disabled. I don't really know what this is like, but I guess there's an extra reward if we do this. What do we get here? Uh, let me see modifiers. So what's the what's the reward? Here it is. Five artifacts. Ah, okay. And you get 30 XP. So, when you... First of all, you can pick your difficulty. There's four of them. I'm going to play on the lowest difficulty. I've been thinking about trying... I was thinking about going in and just seeing the max difficulty, but I just want to show off the game itself, and I feel like the max difficulty is just going to be me getting smacked down a little bit. Uh, so, at the start of the run, you can pick a caravan. This is what that upgrade was. Your caravan will determine your starting goods and your starting population. So... I can either take six lizards, three beavers, or nine lizards. I'll pick the... I'm a, I'm a big beaver fan, so I'll pick the beavers. And then you have embark points, which you get to use to spend to buy starting goods. So we're going to start with 20 eggs, 30 wood, and 20 roots. And this is a game with a lot of resources, and you just kind of have to generally grasp what they are. It, the game does a good job, which is fine with me. Uh, so let's see... Let's see what this is like with the modifier. I think that, actually, you know, the thing is, orders are pretty important, so I don't necessarily want to do... Uh, yes, I want to cancel this. I don't necessarily want to do this because orders are important. And, uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not too too jazzed about it. Import orders are important about to understand what the hell's actually going on in the game. So let's move towards this question mark and go to Coral Forest instead. So there's a little blurb about the zone, you can see your rewards, and then you can see the modifiers. Seasonal conditions, severity, mild. And then there's a diverse flora. Vegetation mutates into unique strains. Each type of tree has distinct bonuses. Okay. And the forest is as scary as it is beautiful. Villagers have a 5% chance for bonus yields from production and gathering for each hostility level. Okay. The trees have a chance to have meat? Sorry, what? The trees... Am I about to go cut down a fucking chicken tree? What is this? That's exciting. All right. Uh, so we're gonna. I'm gonna take the lizardman team. Actually, no. I'm gonna, I'll take the lizardman team. Yeah. Nine lizardmen. You start with extra. Vet, what is it? You can see here. You get ten wood. Ten wood. Mm, I don't think it's too worth it to compare, honestly, because I don't know what this shit does yet. When you're like a hundred hours deep, you can really min max this. I'm sure. Starting out, I think it's better just to take it easy and go. And so we shall go. I think the overworld stuff is important to take some time on because that, that matters a lot, and when it opened up I went, whoa, cool. Okay, so on the lower difficulty, villagers need less food, and then... Let's see, so our mysterious positives. Mating season, plus three to meat production, gain additional meat yield. Active only in the drizzle season. Mm -hmm. And heavy drops, plus five to spark dew production, gain additional spark dew only in drizzle. And then during the storm... Uh, there will be a minus four to resolve, and don't worry, all of this will make sense. During the storm, we will also have our villagers will be exhausted. Okay. 
Oh, but if they have houses, then they won't have it. See that? Okay. You can click to learn more on this. The game has a full-on compendium where you can open up and read about whatever you need to learn about. Nice and easy. Okay. So, I will do my best to make this quick. I, I'd like to not have this be a 40-minute video of me talking at you. So, at the end of the day, it is a uh, city builder, though, and these games tend to be pretty uh, complicated. So, the general flow here is... We start in this middle area, there are glades throughout the map, which are these little shrouded areas. When you open up a glade, you get whatever's in them. Uh, it's typically more resource nodes. There are also dangerous glades and deadly glades. These are the bigger ones with the skulls on them. When you open these up, you get a negative effect, uh, or rather, you get like a timer. Is I've only opened one or two so far, and it's usually you have an event that you have to fulfill in there, and if you don't fulfill it in time, it starts killing your villagers. So. That's cool. Uh, let's go through starting starting buildings here. You have your typical stuff: woodcutters, stone cutters, uh, harvesting, scavenging. It's pretty easy to tell what you need because whenever you see a resource, you can click on it and then you can hover over what it needs. So like these root deposits here, which will give me roots, which are a basic food, and they also have a ten or twenty percent chance to give us some herbs, and that is harvested with a scavenger's camp. So to start out, we're just going to build three woodcutters, and let it start rolling. So, so something that really blew me away, I don't know if I've ever seen a city builder do this before, and at first I went, huh, I don't know how I feel about that, but after a minute I went, oh, that's sick. At any time in this game, and I, re I really realized that after I started playing, this is actually massive. At any time, you can move your buildings, except for, I think, the base two buildings, which are the ancient hearth here, which keeps or gives us like warmth around this area and the main storage building any other building you place you can move for free whenever you want i went whoa for real okay anyway what's our goal here uh bottom of the map bottom of the screen here i'm gonna let this go at 1x speed here for a bit while i talk uh bottom of the screen here is our reputation we need to fill the reputation bar up to win and the bottom right is the impatience meter which is increasing at per at a rate of 0.26 per minute. When this bar fills up, you lose. Uh, alongside this, we get to pick new buildings occasionally. Basically, every we start with three, and then every time we reach one of these uh, blue pips, we get a new one. So far, it seems like it's been you pick one of three. I don't know, and I think I can close it. Yeah. So I'm gonna actually wait to take those until I see what my orders are, which you'll see what all this does in a minute. Uh, now that our buildings are built, we can set up and have our lizard boys get harvesting. So, much like the other city builder I covered recently, one, the Wandering Village, you get to mark priority with wood cutting. Not like a crazy diff- or not like, uh, what, a, what a unique idea, they stole this from the Wandering Village. No, it makes perfect sense. Don't get me wrong. And now they'll start harvesting these trees that I marked. If you don't mark, they'll just harvest at random. Okay, so also occasionally you'll get these cornerstones. These just give you a permanent uh, buff, basically. So gain two amber for every six pack of trade goods produced. I have no clue. I don't actually know what amber does. I think it's just a trade resource. Or get two additional villagers. I'm down. That is what I want. So other stuff to look out for here. You can see the season change by hovering this middle option. We're in year one and the, the season will change in two and a half minutes. And then you can see the hostility of the forest. So I don't 100% know what happens when this goes up, actually. Yeah, no, I don't actually know what this does. I think it just makes your resolve lower, which I'll explain in a moment as well. There's a lot to talk about. Hold on. So I'm gonna pause for a second because it's, it's coming at you hard and fast. So hostility increases makes your resolve lower. Your resolve is the number underneath your character. So here, top left here, let's look at the characters. We have nine lizards right now. None of them are free and they're all homeless. You can click this to see what they like and dislike. And these are impacting their resolve. So when your resolve goes to zero, they'll start leaving the village. If you run out of villagers, you also lose. Uh, and if it reaches the threshold, so for lizards it's 15, then you'll start gaining reputation every minute. So lizards will like being sheltered, of course. 
You can get up to plus three for being sheltered. There's also species-specific housing, which will give you another bonus to their uh, their shelter. And then they like specific foods. They like jerky and skewers. And you can see the other things they're getting. They're comfortable, so they get a plus one. And they're near the pyre, so they get a plus one. And then similarly... Oh, is this also positives? Oh, these are, might also be positives, actually. I thought it was top row positives, bottom row negatives, but I think that's actually not correct. Okay, hold on. So they also like pie, pickled goods, brawling, and religion. Okay, cool. I got it. Now then, uh, orders are the other major mechanic here. Every uh, little bit, so 10 minutes, 46 minutes, 34 minutes, and 22 minutes, we'll get to take these orders. These orders are basically mission goals, and when you complete them, you'll get reputation. So I can say, sell goods worth at least 8 amber, or build a trading post and gain 5 amber. And then the rewards here are, we get simple tools, wildfire essence, and new villagers, I think. And we'd get more for this. I don't know what a lot of this stuff does. You gotta, you'll gotta, you have to deal with that. I don't know what everything does, because there's a ton of resources, and I didn't want to spend 10 hours learning this game to do this video. Uh, roughly, what I'll know is I'll just know... Like I, I tend to learn these games by doing, personally. But... It goes worth at least 8 amber to a trader or using trade routes. I feel like the villagers are a better get, but this is a lot harder to do. But I'll take it. And then when we complete this, we'll get to deliver it and we'll get this stuff. Now what else do we have here? We have... Pack up 3 crops or build 35 paths. And we either get the perk of 10% better... Or ten, okay, shovels. Ten, villagers move 10% faster on roads and will also get 10 stones. Sorry, why? Shovels make your villagers move faster? Okay, you know what? Right on, dude. Or we'll get obsidian shovels, which gives you faster crop planting. And we'll get industrialized farming. Ooh, this is really good. Uh, we aren't really built to farm right now with lizards, though. Lizards, so each of the races has something they're good at. Lizards are good at hunting. Uh, and so farming isn't super great right now bound for this one because it's easy. And when you get reputation, you get access to a new building as well. Uh, solve any two glade events or deliver three packaged building materials. I want to take one of... First of all, plus one to plank production is very good. But I want to take more villagers. Oh no, plus one to plank production seems so insane to me. Pack of building materials. And you can see when you hover over it, you can also see where this will be produced at. Makeshift post, flawless rain mill, rain mill, or tinkerer. We'll do this. Okay, so these are our general goals for the short term. And on top of that, we also want to fulfill it. So to summarize now, I will do the summary and then we'll just start playing the game normally. Uh, the general flow of this game is you'll get your, your overarching goals for the orders, and then you'll also be trying to keep your villagers happy and produce towards filling your goals out. That's the rough flow of the game. The goal right now is to make my lizards happy and not have any of them leave, produce reputation through that, and then fulfill our orders. And now that we have our orders, we can pick these. So we need to make packs of building materials. And I think that packs of building materials are... I think that they're these. You can click on these at any time to see what they are. I'll show you that off when we get to it. I'm going to go for the lumber mill. And then we'll get a new set of three. I'm looking for, yeah, rain mill. I want pack of building materials here. So we're going to grab rain mill. And we're going to grab... I'm going to go trapper's camp. Yeah, I'm going to go trapper's camp. Because that harvests meat. And this, I think, the eggs you can harvest with trapper's camp. Yeah, so we'll put this bad boy right here. Now, paths are free. So we just have to build a road around our civilization. Which I'm down to do. I do love building roads and making the city look nice. Good to go here. Now, do I I have no free workers, so nothing's going to get built right now. That's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to cut one of the woodcutters down. And I'll have him go build this whole city. Okay, and now we get a we get an event. So we broke into this glade, we get a small abandoned cache. You can also hover over it when it's revealed. So there's eight fertile soil, which you need to farm on. And then we have the worm tongue nest, which I think is harvest trappers. Okay. And this will give you insects. And you could also forage it. Does this? Okay, no, trappers also trap insects. Okay, I thought they were going to generate meat. 
but no, they generate insects. And then there's also a cache. So when there's a cache, you can pick it up and there'll be one of two resolutions. I'll send my man over here. So we can either keep it, we'll get 30 berries and a food stockpile. I don't know what a food stockpile is necessarily, but I assume it's just food. Or we can send it to the Citadel for 10 amber and half a reputation. I will send it to the Citadel. I don't need the resources right now. One of the materials is missing. What do I need? Oh, I need simple tools for this. Okay. So I don't have four simple tools, so we can't finish this right now. When I get simple tools, we can finish that up. Okay. Uh, I am now going to speed up. The game goes up to this fast, which is pretty fast. Roughly that fast. And it's time to move this. Move the, move the woodcutter's camp, and we want to prioritize cutting into this other glade. I'm going to wait to clear out this dangerous glade, because I will probably get bodied, is my fear. And I'm going to cut back on woodcutters and start trapping here. And I'm going to prioritize. So what you can do here is you can prioritize. I'll pause. You can, you can prioritize what you want to generate. Now, I don't know if there's much choice at the snake nest. I think this always generates eggs, and then it has a chance to generate leather. I'm pretty sure is how it works at this. But there are some that have mixed outcomes, I'm pretty sure, which then it matters making your priority. Yeah, now the flow is... And now, now we just kind of let them go. And... Yeah, saving because it's about to change to... Day. Can you manually save? Okay, you cannot manually save. Good to know. Blizzard post. Peace of mind. Okay, so I haven't really worked with this much, but you can, when you add more villagers, you can plant decorations around, and when you plant decorations, your hub levels up. You can also build more hubs as you build out, because you'll see the map is pretty large. So as you expand outward, yeah, this map is pretty big. As you expand outward, you can build more hubs, which is this, I believe. Uh, yeah, so we start with two of the things to build them, so... I imagine later on what you'll do is you'll have a woodcutter just clearing space for you as you start to run out of space, because that is the classic conundrum in a game like this. How do I deal with the fact that I'm completely out of space eventually? A wandering Village had this too, where the there is just a cap on how much you can actually build. Eventually your map cleans up, or clears out, and you're maxed. And then it's just how long can I live while maxed. And it's an interesting situation, I think. It's an interesting end game. I I think I like having more space, because you can't have infinite space, surely. Surely that's not right. We're gonna build this rain mill. And I need so I need planks and and fabric to build this. So to get those I need to build a workshop, crude workstation here. And then I need to find I actually don't have the fabric. Because so fabric is made with well, we can check this, right? So another another thing is m many items that you're producing. So there's base materials and then there's produced materials. Produced materials are made out of base materials, but there's a lot of options a lot of the time. So like fabric here defaults to being made out of plant fiber, but you can also make it out of reeds or leather, and you can change uh, which one is used. So you can you can use leather. Like right now, it's only going to use plant fiber. You can also it says shift to change priority. Ah, so you can change the priority. So you can say use plant fiber first, uh, leather second, reed third if you wanted. That's cool. Good to know. I'm not going to prioritize this though, because I don't have any of that. Now, so I need to find a place to get plant fiber. Roots come with herbs. Uh, this is actually a different start than any I've had. Most of them have been really easy to break into new glades. It's actually really hard for me to get into new glades here. It's been taking a while. And I think it's just because the, the guys have so far to walk here. So let's build them a little path, shall we? There we go. I'm gonna pause so that I can build my path properly. I could build a little circle around the the main buildings that I can never... This way I won't just like block myself in, because I think you can actually just wall yourself out completely. Small abandoned cat. Simple tools or infused tools. So we can keep the goods for machinery and chest of coals, which I think is fuel. Or we can amber and reputation. Okay. I think what I'll do is I'll wait for the next set of orders to, to file in, and I'd like to at least finish one order. 
and then I will pause, finish the run, and then resume so you can see end of run stuff. But so far this has actually been pretty tough, I gotta say. And so the roguelike aspect is what you start with around you and the glades positioning changes. My lizards are... there we go. New cornerstone. I don't know what causes these to come in. Every two newly solved dangerous and forbidden events lowers hostility by 50, or forest recedes as heavily guarded trade caravans pour into the settlement. Hostility reduced by 15 every time you sell 25 amber worth of goods. I'll take calming the forest. You know what I'm down for here? I'm down to just kind of send it, actually, because I haven't done this with the Glades so far. You have a pretty good feel for this game. My So, closing thoughts before I just start fucking around in the game. I think this game is really cool. And I'm a big fan. Oh, this is out of range of the Woodcutter's Camp. Also, there's newcomers. Mm. We get eggs or we get grain and clay. So, you we get five newcomers here. Humans are good at farming, beavers are good at wood cutting and engineering. And I'm going to take the... I'm gonna take the resources here actually because I'm down for clay. So beavers are good at wood cutting and engineering, humans are good at farming and brewing, the lizards are good at meat production. I don't really understand why the lizards don't have a second thing they're good at, but Oh, they like to work in cold-blooded air, or warm environments. I see. The other thing, I just looked at these symbols as the same. They're actually good at something else. They're good at this ancient hearth thing. Yeah, okay, so there's a guy running this. I see. Lizard fire keepers are adept at ancient rites. I didn't even notice that guy there. What we get? We got broccoli, reeds. Oh, reeds are good. So we're going to plant ourselves a harvester's camp. Excuse me. Oh, it's not. It's because this is in the way. Harvester's camp goes down. Is this? Oh, this is a coal deposit gathered via a mine. I don't think I have that. Oh, also, my orders are done, so we can deliver this and get faster on roads and ten stone here. Sorry, I forgot about that. And I'm gonna send the newly gathered two beavers and one human over here, and we're gonna cut through to this dangerous glade. And I want to see what that does. Now I need... So I think I want pack of provisions here. I want to work towards pack of building materials too. But I want to start working towards selling things, I think. But we're, we're working on that. Let's do... Let's see. Coal, jerky, or... I already have something that produces flour, though. So we could go for the smokehouse, and we could maybe get some higher level food for our people to try and work on our resolve. Different characters have different resolve levels, by the way. Humans have naturally higher resolve, and but need a higher resolve to get reputation producing. Lizards start at 9, but only need 15 to produce. Humans start at 16, but need 30 to produce. New orders. Aid for the humans, pack of crops, or aid for the lizards, pack- I, I just got something that can give us pack of provisions. And we get a plus three to the Lizard's Resolve if we do this one, that seems good. Luxurious delivery, pack of luxury goods, or uh, we can take we can send 35 roots for five beavers. That seems really good. Okay, because there's roots right here. I just need to move my scavenger's camp over, which I... No, this is a trapper's camp, okay. So we can go... First of all, I need to send some people... Actually, is this is... This is not engineering, okay. Crude workstation is not engineering, so we can send these guys over here. And I want to prioritize fabric and planks. Okay, quick. Take a look. So we got this big glade here, and there's a glade event. Open vault. Open entrance. So we need to... It's going to take 3 minutes, 30 seconds, and all woodcutters and gatherers get a minus 12 to resolve while this event is being worked on. I does it like you tinkering with ancient relics? Impatience grows 100% faster while I'm doing this also. Okay. Oh, also, uh, every 10 minutes it's going to kill all living beings in the radius of 20 fields. Ah, okay. So I do have to clear this out, or else it'll start killing my villagers after 10 minutes. But it's going to make my gatherers and woodcutters very unhappy. Okay, so we can micromanage that. 
And what we do here is we either get three incense for every 10 roots produced and an ancient tablet. Chest of ancient tablets. Okay, wow. And we'll get... Uh, it's plus three to global resolve, or we can send it back. I'll definitely keep this. Okay. So when I... I'll resolve this, and then when I finish resolving this, I will pause. That's going to be the plan. So to, we're going to work on resolving this. This seems very important. So what I have to do, I think, is I have to cut all production from gathering and from woodcutting, or else my lizards and my beavers are going to start quitting. So I want to make sure I have some stuff stockpiled here. By the way, I forgot to show you this. At the top panel, I forgot about this. The top panel has your resources. I compl Oh man, I can't believe I forgot to talk about this. Uh, so top panel has your resources, and you can click to see a more detailed breakdown of general food, general building materials, and then a breakdown of that. Consumables breakdown, crafting resources, and a breakdown, and then fuel and a breakdown. So I, I forgot about that because I barely look at it. It is very uh, not something that I look at because yeah, generally I just I just kind of let it be. I watch the food occasionally, but. Early on, it doesn't feel like something that you have to worry about beyond just looking at your resources and how they're going. So I want to wait until I get enough planks. Okay, I have enough planks. Here's the plan. I'm gonna cut all. I'm gonna cut all of this production. Any any woodcutters, any gatherers are on break. Does this count as gathering? I think this counts as gathering. Then we're gonna send in. Two lizard men, and I'm gonna keep the goods because a, a bonus to global resolve seems a lot better than 5.5 Queen's Grace. Also, incense for every 10 roots produced seems good too. So, do I have anyone still on gathering? Another thing you can do is you can click on the uh, you can you can click on the the lizards, and then you can look at where they are, which I think is a nice thing. Or, or you can just click on anyone, really. I need to pull... I haven't figured out how to get rid of it, though. Get off of me. Just gotta hit escape. Okay, and now my only human is... So it's actually... It's a general resolve thing. So I don't have to pull everyone. My human can just be at four resolve. I don't mind. And I could probably send... Yeah, you see, I don't lose my resolve all the way. Okay, negative one is bad. Well, we can do this, and then just keep an eye out. And then, what about, can I send a lizard in here? Okay, so lizards seem like they're less affected by resolve hits. That's how it feels, anyway. So I can leave, like, a few lizards on harvesting, and I can leave maybe, like, one guy on trapping. Okay, so each lizard is minus one. It's probably because there's more lizards, actually. All right. And then I want to move this over to here and clear out this glade. What else was over here? Snake nest. We get some eggs and some leather. And I need to find a way to get simple tools. And my impatience is kind of spiking. It's a little scary. Also, two guys working on this is making it progress twice as fast. Very cool. And we will just chill and take it easy during this. Don't do anything too rad. So overall, because I'm going to be basically wrapping up after this, my feeling is that this game is very cool, and I'm definitely looking forward to playing a lot more of it. I hope that it gets the recognition that I think it deserves, because it's a lot of fun. Like, it's really just a lot of fun. I have to say. So far, I've had a great time with it, and I love the roguelike aspect of it. feels like it becomes very... I need to cancel this human. It, it makes it very... Uh like, replayable, I guess. Because I felt like Frostpunk, I eventually lost the desire to keep going with Frostpunk. Okay, and then mission accomplished, and we get three tablets, and then we get perks added to the bottom left. If you didn't notice this, by the way, perks are showing up in the bottom left for your review. And so now we should have a permanent boost to our resolve of plus three, and when we get back plus four from the storm's end here... We should... I think something interesting happens, right? I think we get a lizard uh, threshold, perhaps. Maybe not. In the 12. Alright. Either way. 
Am I not done with this plank? You guys have been making planks for a hundred freaking years. You're not done with planks. All right. So what I'm gonna do now, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and pause. I feel like you have a you have a pretty good feeling for it. My my grasp on this, based on the orders, is that a run probably takes about an hour, uh, which is a good time. I think it's a it's a good amount of time. I think you will finish your reputation when you finish your last order. So uh, yeah. I think this game is really good. I think it's a lot of fun. If you like City Builders, definitely give this one a spin. It's still on sale. Uh, I will be back in, well, zero time for you, but I'll be back in, like, probably 40 minutes of my own time to finish up the run and see what the end screen is like. So, stay tuned. And I can't tab out. Hold on. Hello, welcome back. I am, I am here. I'm right at the end of the run. My reputation is just about to cap out. And I figured I'd show you how it all ended up. So this actually ended a lot faster than I expected it to. I gotta tell you, like we we still have four minutes left on the orders here too. So uh, to recap what you have missed, I well, mostly it's been very frantic, but I've gotten a much better understanding of how the game flows. So a few mechanics that I've figured out while playing on my own here. Uh, the star levels of the materials are how efficient that building is at making that specific thing here so the example of this is the lumber mill that i can show you so baseline you start out with the oh, i think i got rid of it no you start out with this crude workstation which can turn eight wood into three planks and you can see it gets a it doesn't even have a star it gets like a weird circle on it basically and it does that in 40 seconds when i unlock the lumber mill the lumber mill can turn three wood into three planks, and it does it in three, or sorry, in 20 seconds. And that's because it's a three star at this. So my initial feeling is that you probably specialize, like I'm good at making lumber here, so I do this, and then I can trade because I built this trader's post. My trader isn't here, but you can see who's coming and you can call them early, but it causes more impatience. Uh, and you can see what she's going to have potentially. Uh, so that's important to grasp. The other thing is you don't have to finish all of the orders. Yeah, my last order is done. I got a little got a little boost here. Uh, but yeah, so there's that. And then the other thing is basically I didn't keep everyone super happy. The resolve number increases for like what you need to have your resolve at before they start producing reputation. Because if you remember, it was much lower. Their target was like 16. Now it's 29 on the lizards because my resolve is much higher. Uh, but yeah, a few a few other things, I guess. Uh, I did find another dangerous glade. I found this thing, and I was not prepared for it. However, it didn't seem like the negative effect triggered because I was resolving it. That could be wrong, but I was resolving it when the timer ran out and the negative effect did not happen, which might be how it works, and if it does, that's pretty cool. And otherwise, yeah, nothing nothing too else too much. Oh, I did level up my Ancient Hearth, and there's more, higher levels uh, unlocked in the meta progress. And that is... Uh, I, I put up four benches somewhere. And I think all it does is give you... Uh, it gives you uh, resistance to corruption and more resolve. Okay. And so there are a lot of other mechanics that I probably missed out on and didn't cover in this video. But that's fine with me. I think that it's really, really hard to condense a full-on city builder like this into 20 to 30 minutes. Even 40 minutes is hard. So, yeah, we're going to complete our last order here, uh, which is to deliver six packs of provisions, and we're done. So I got 30 experience points, and I got 14 food, and we can see our score here. I got a half multiplier because I was playing on the easiest difficulty. Uh, and so higher difficulties also give you more experience for leveling up as well. Uh, but we got a score for all of this, and we... You, so, okay, so you can continue and play an endless if you want, or you can leave when you're finished. Good to know. Good to know. I want to just go back and see the meta progress and see what it all looks like now on the final screen, because I think that's uh, good to see for you as well. Okay, so it auto names it. So the question marks are definitely just zones on the map that have something specific going on. And you can see it looks like it cleared. We, we filled up about... What do you think that is? Let me, let me measure with my hand here. Two, three, four, uh, so it looks like it's about an eight. So it's about nine, eight, somewhere in the eight to ten range before you reset your build out. Okay. Oh, and you, I see. So the the little bread indicators are how much reward you'll get. So since this is close to a city I've already founded, 
I'll get less reward. You see, I'll get 14 here, I'll get 10 here, I'll get 8 here. And then if I go out in somewhere new, I'll get full value 14. Okay, cool. All right, so that's all good. I want to go into the city real quick and show you uh, upgrading. So buy upgrades, and I want to show off the deeds if I can. Okay, so we got 10 food. That will unlock the obsidian archive, which gives us access to deeds. And so, yeah, so these are just ways to gain experience, it looks like right now. Oh, there's also some other rewards. Ah, new, uh, new stuff. New, new buildings. Or new, uh, new decorations is what they are. Okay, that's cool. New cornerstone. Okay, so there's a lot of these, too. Look at all of these. Discover 250 glades. Win four, win a game with four dangerous glade events standing. Oh, God. Okay. Win a game on the difficulty prestige 20. Okay, so it sounds like this game has a very high depth of replayability. Uh, cool. So, that's the end. Uh, let me know how you feel about me doing these pauses in these sorts of videos, too. I don't, I, I mean, I don't feel like it's right for me to play through like that, because if I played through this video, it would be like two hours. So, because I'm talking, this was me, it took me 40 minutes while I was just playing it on my own. So imagine how long it would be if I was stopping to talk and explain things, right? But I have a much better understanding of this game now, and I hope you do as well. I think I covered everything that I want to cover now that I have a good feel for it. This game's great. Definitely give it a shot. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave me a like, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.